So welcome everyone to our 2022 Black History celebration as we celebrate the legacy of public service. I want to thank you all for being here today. My name is Grady Stevenson. I am the interim director for the Department of Community Relations. On behalf of our mayor, the 57th mayor of the city of Cleveland, Mayor Bibb, we welcome you all. At this time, we're going to have our black national anthem by the one and only Minister Fred Graves. Yes, we can all stand. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has brought on us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. Black history, a time when we can celebrate and reflect on days gone by, but to also look at those who have paved the way for us. Black History Month points to several individuals here in the city of Cleveland, but two today that we want to acknowledge and celebrate. Celebrating the first in public service in the city of Cleveland. From 1809, when George Peake, the first settler came to Cleveland, the first police officer in 1881, Cleveland police officer William Tucker, the first civil servant commission president, Harry E. Davis in 1928. This brings us closer to names we all know, Judge Sarah Harper and former judge and Cuyahoga County Commission President C. Ellen Conley. We are part of the fabric of this community and we salute them for paving the way. Judge Harper, a fellow John Adams rebel, the first African American woman to graduate from Case Western Reserve University School of Law in 1952. Another native Clevelander, is former judge and county commission president, Ju Judge C. Ellen Conley. She has served as a law clerk for Ohio's 8th District Court of Appeals before serving as a trial referee and probate, and probate division of Cuyahoga County Court of Common Pleas. She has the distinction of being the first African-American female elected judge in the state without being first appointed. We honor these individuals and thank them for paving the way for us today. So if you wouldn't mind, could you put your hands together with us right quick and let's just give them a great round of applause. At this time, we want to welcome our honorable mayor, Mayor Bibb, Justin Bibb, the 57th mayor of the city of Cleveland. Will you help me give him a warm welcome, please? Thank you, Mayor. 
its 58th mayor of Cleveland, by the way. No worries, no worries. Uh, it is truly an honor and a joy uh, to be here today to celebrate uh, Black History Month and to really reflect on the journey of our people in Cleveland and across the country that made society better for black folks. And um, as I reflect on uh, this important event, it's fitting that today we are celebrating uh, Judge Harper uh, and Judge Connolly on the same day that President Biden made his announcement to appoint the first black woman to the Supreme Court. Um, I also want to just acknowledge all of those who helped put this important event together. If you could please stand, and let's just give you guys a, a quick round of applause if we can to acknowledge your, your hard work. You know, um, one of the things that um, I've been reflecting a lot about as we think about this important month and as we close out Black History Month, I truly believe that now more than ever, we need to encourage the next generation to truly understand that black history is black excellence. Let me say that again. That black history is black excellence. And I remember when I came back to Cleveland after uh, working in Washington, D.C. for a couple of years, I had started uh, working uh, in county government uh, when Judge Connolly was then president of county council. And I remember one of my first meetings with uh, Judge Connolly, and as a bright I 23 year old policy wonk, I thought I had all the answers. I remember I was pitching this proposal to the judge, and she scrutinized the proposal so much because she recognized the importance that as a young black man, I should always step my game up and always reach for higher heights. It's because of that kind of commitment to excellence that we've seen in Judge Connolly and Judge Harper that has allowed my path to be possible as the youngest black mayor in Cleveland's history. And we have a lot of headwinds ahead of us. As you know, voting rights continues to be a major problem. Having more black judges continues to be a major problem in our city and our county. But I know that our best days are ahead because of the sacrifice that we've had from leaders like Judge Harper and Judge Connolly. And as your mayor, I'm forever grateful for your commitment to serve, but also your deep-hearted commitment to excellence day in and day out. So on behalf of the city of Cleveland and my administration, thank you for your investments in our city. The work must continue. The fight lives on. But I know our best days are ahead because of what you've done for our great city. God bless you all, and thank you so much. I appreciate you. Mayor yes. of the city of Cleveland. Thank you so much. Um, on our program, it has that our council president um, is supposed to be up now, but as you know, we are in budget hearings. And so he is a little delayed, but he is on his way. So at this time, we're going to have our invocation by my board chair, um, Reverend Charles Lucas. Let us pray. Gracious Redeemer, we are gathered here in this 100-year-old building, Cleveland Public Hall, to celebrate Black History Month. The spiritual whispers of Carter G. Woodson, who decided long ago that it was important to have an observance of the struggle of black people, their accomplishments, and the necessary ladders for equality. So on this day, we continue this observance. We also today come to give special recognition to two black women jurists, Judge Sarah J. Harper and Judge C. Ellen Connolly, who executed excellent jurisprudence on their benches. In addition to the work that they did in the courtroom, both of them have been superior role models, not only for law students, but for people who are interested in community activism. We also pray for our city, 
our mayor, Justin Bibb, and his administration as they complete two months of new guidance for our city. Now, bless the food that we're about to receive, but we're also mindful that on this same street, Lakeside, right down the street there, people lined up at the shelter wanting food and shelter, and we remember them at this time. These are all the blessings we ask in his name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Lucas. At this time, lunch will be served, and then we'll go further into our program. Thank you. Good afternoon. It is such a pleasure to be here and discuss two women that I have always admired, respected, sometimes fought with, but always held them in high esteem. And talking about Judge Connolly, who's now, and I'm not saying this because she's one of my best friends, but when she was on the bench, she's a lot different from me. Many of you know me as, you know, rough, tough, don't take no stuff, Sappho. Connolly wanted to work out everybody's problems. No matter what your problem was, she was going to find a solution in sociology that was going to make you whole. Many of those people have now become her children of sorts. And she still has them in her life. She still guides them. They still do their deeds. And she still says, oh, why they do that? And then she comes and she tells me, and I say to her, you need to stop what you're doing and let that person grow up. Judge Harper, on the other hand, was my mentor in many ways. I served for 13 years as her public defender in her courtroom. I had the opportunity to talk to her about politics. I had the opportunity to talk to her about life. I ran to her when I had problems with other judges and problems in my life and she provided guidance for me. I can't think of anybody who was more significant in terms of reaching out to, to young women and saying, you can do it, why not? I remember when I was thinking about running for judge and I ran, this is in 1985, and you all, I'm the oldest serving judge in the county now because I've been a judge now for 35 years. But when I went to Judge Harper and I said, I'm going to run, and I said, well, I don't really know that much about politics. Both of my grandfathers were Baptist ministers. And the only thing I know about politics is the way they did church politics, you know, like organizing people and reaching out to people and reaching down to the, to the, to, to the man on the low charge and getting those people to support you. And she looked at me and she listened and she said, that's the way to run a campaign. And so I've always run my campaigns like that from that point on. But in talking about being in the, on the bench and the impact people can have on your life and what they can do for you to nurture you and to help you to grow and reaching out to you, I couldn't think of two women who are more deserving than Judge Connolly and Judge Harper. Both of them, in different ways, always had, had a tendency to look back, to see who they could cultivate to bring on. And whether they want to accept it or not, I'm one of those people. But I also appreciate the fact what they did for other young people who are coming along and trying to enter politics, because it's not easy for a judge. There's so many restrictions. There's so many things you can't say. There's so many things you can't do. There's so many people you can't become involved with. But you still have to get yourself elected. And there is a process in doing it. And, and both of them have been extremely helpful to so many people who are going, who are um, now maturing into judges and venturing out into many fields. And I'm reminded because when uh, the vice president was just elected, somebody said to me, well, she's never done anything. She doesn't deserve that. What did she ever do? 
And when I think about these two women, I think about what they did. And what they did is they got themselves elected. And if they get themselves elected, then other women can see them, see that they're judges, see what it takes to get elected, and they can do it too. So when I think about their contributions to the judiciary, to me as a friend, to the legal community, and they're both scholars. We were at an affair last night, and Reverend Moss was dittering off all these dates, and 1843, and this happened in 1802, and every time he would say it, Connolly would lean over to me and say, he's talking about this one. He's talking about this one. And I, after a while, I said, how does she know that? But she's a history buff, and she loves it. She nurtures that as well, and, and she'll give it back to you as soon as you say it. So when you talk to her about historical things, be careful what you say, because she, she's a walking dictionary about it. But anyway, in concluding, I don't want to talk too long about these two people that are certainly my role models, certainly the people who nurtured me. And I would, you know, I think that you are remiss when you don't publicly acknowledge the things that they've done for you and what they've done to help to create you to become the person that you are on the bench. And I don't think that we would have as many women on the bench now as we do if it were not for the two of them. So just on behalf of the general public, I'd like to express my appreciation for them, my appreciation for the work that they've done and for the nurturing that they've done to every female in the legal profession. Thank you very much, judges. Thank you, Judge. At this time, I would like to bring to the podium uh, Constance Trumbull Hawk. Uh, she is the daughter of Judge Harper. She's here uh, to give reflections, and when she is complete, we will have Minister Graves come up again for another selection. Good afternoon. I'm so uh, um, impressed by uh, Judge Sappho. No notes, just, you know, no ums, no ahs, just, you know, just, so, there you go. Um, uh, as uh, Shelley said, I'm Constance Trumbo Hawk. I'm the first uh, of the five children of Judge George W. Trumbo and Judge Sarah J. Harper. My sister Karen, she's the fourth, you know, um, uh, is here as well, and we are pleased to be here representing our mother, and we thank you for the honor that you are giving her this today. Our mother will be 96 years old in August and is doing very well. Um, however, uh, she's not able to negotiate these events as she once was, and we're happy to step in for her. She remains an enduring source of pride and inspiration for our family and to our community. Her legacy, love of God and family, passion for justice, especially for African Americans and women, and investment in making sure our youth know their history and their worth. That's what characterizes her nearly 100 years of life. I can remember as a young person seeing my mother after a difficult day look as though she was weighted down with the events. In those instances, she was fond of saying, it's a good thing I'm a Christian. As a young person, I didn't always understand what she meant. It's a good thing I'm a Christian. Now as an adult, I fully understand that my mother leaned on her faith and her commitment to the teachings of Christ as a foundation for the decisions <clears throat> she made during difficult times. Many people may not know that she was a Bible scholar, which she learned at Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church under the tutelage of Reverend Leroy Kelly. Our mother loves the law. She actually has many stories as to why she decided to become a lawyer. Often, um, she told us of times when she was growing up on 65th Street and somebody would get arrested. She, would remember, uh, she, would, she remembered asking her dad, 
what happened and why did it happen? And he would always say, it's because they don't know their rights. My mother has devoted her life to helping people know their rights. She became a warrior for justice and was rightly inducted into the Ohio Civil Rights Hall of Fame a few years ago. Our mother, as Judge Conley, loves history, especially black history. I wonder if Judge Conley and Judge Saffel remember the time when mom got all the black women judges together to pay tribute to black women leaders in law and medicine and the arts, and they put on these skits and readings uh, in a free program at Liberty Hill Baptist Church. Judge Conley, Judge Jasper, Judge Sappho, and the late Congresswoman Stephanie Tubbs Jones, when she was on the bench, joined in. I was the mistress of ceremonies, and at every dress rehearsal, I wondered how it was actually going to come together because, you know, everyone was busy and they didn't quite m memorize their lines, and we were, I was thinking, okay, how's this going to work? But it was always a marvelous tribute to black women during Women's History Month. Mom's service in the United States Marine Corps led to her induction into the Ohio Veterans Hall of Fame, as she was the first woman of any race to serve on the Marine Corps Reserve's court as a judge. Due to that service, the Volunteers of America organization is dedicating a 12-apartment facility for women veterans, those who are suffering from addiction and PTSD. This will happen in May of this year. They are naming it the Judge Sarah J. Harper Village. Right. It will, thank you. It will be located near the VA hospital in Glenville. I'll conclude by saying that though mom has had many firsts and many tributes, few have meant as much to her as the establishment of the Judge Sarah J. Harper Library, Children's Library at Othway Homes. She loved working with the children at that library, and she worked with them well into her 90s. Again, on behalf of our entire family, thank you. What a beautiful moment it is to celebrate our women. I remember growing up in church, they would always talk about the woman being created as the helpmeet. Every good man has a woman to stand beside her. And after going to seminary, my teacher one day broke that word down and he says, we're misusing the word helpmeet. In the Hebrew, it represents the word ezer. Ezer is defined as a rescuer. If I can say something, I believe that these honorees, all of the women that have come before us, have been the ezers of America. I believe the reason that we're still standing as black African American men is because God created Easers, those who would rescue us from our foolishness, from our mistakes, from our failures. I remember standing in my pulpit in the end of 2018 and I told my church, I said, this is the year where we're going to see the rise of the Esthers, of the Ruths, the Naomi's, the Deborah's. And so I congratulate our honorees on today. And I believe it would be befitting to just sing this hymn that simply says, Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father, for there is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, Thou forever will.
wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, your hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Great is thy faithfulness. Yes, Lord, great is thy faithfulness. Every time I wake up in the morning, new mercies I see. Before we go any further, we do uh, would, would like to acknowledge Judge Cassandra Collier-Williams. Thank you for being here with us today. <laughs> Thank you, Judge. <laughs> She's having a cookie. <laughs> Thank you. If we are missing, I don't think we're missing any other judge, we'd like to acknowledge uh, <coughs> We're going to turn it back into the hands of Ms. Shockley now to come with our uh, presentation. Shall we? Thank you. So at this time, we are going to make a presentation to our honorees. Uh, we will ask that you come up. Uh, Judge Connolly, if you would come up first, and we will present yours. And if you would like to say a few words. So on behalf of the City of Cleveland Black History Month Committee, we are celebrating our legacy in public service and we would like to honor C. Ellen Connolly. Thank you for leading the path for African Americans in public service. Thank you. Thank you, uh, th thank you very much. It's an honor to receive this. I was talking to a friend of mine this morning and he said, I don't think that you have no in your vocabulary. And uh, Judge Sapple is right. I sit home all day and Everybody, you know, they call up, hey, how you doing? I haven't talked to you. And I'm sitting there waiting like, okay, your cousin got arrested. You're getting a divorce. You need some money. You know? <laughs> so all I do, I think, is sit home and solve problems. But I really appreciate this award because sometimes, you know, you look and, you know, you do all these things and you see, like, these other people getting awards and they didn't mention my name. So I really feel like uh, I'm very honored, particularly from the city of Cleveland. It's the city of my birth. People say, like, you know, why don't you move someplace south and warm up? No, I lived in Cleveland. I was born in January, so weather today is, you know, just like my birthday. So, uh, um, it, and I, re I just want to say I remember with Justin when he first started working down at the county. So, you know, we all come a long way, and it's a really great honor. Thank you very much, and thank you, Judge Sapple, for those kind words.
Okay, and may I have the Trumbull ladies. And I only use Trumbull ladies because it's two of you and I know that you are hot now, but I want. So we would like for you to come and accept on behalf of your mom, Judge Sarah J. Harper. And again, celebrating our legacy and public service, would like to honor Judge Sarah J. Harper. Thank you for leading the path for African Americans in public service. Did you want to say anything about your mom? She's the speaker? Okay. <laughs> All right, so at this time, um, and I did not officially indicate who I am. I'm Shelly Shockley, and I am the uh, co-chair of the Black History Month Committee, as well as the marketing manager for Cleveland Public Power. Um, I've had the pleasure of serving on this committee, thanks to my dear friend, Yvonne Pointer who was once the co-chair uh, co of this committee, um, as well as Denise McCray. So um, this has been a journey, and it has been one that is joyful, um, challenging, and this year, um, as we say a fond farewell, um, I wanted to acknowledge those of us, who, those who have been a part of this, because this doesn't come together by one individual. It is a team effort, and I've had a great team. So at this time, I would like to acknowledge my team. Uh, it's not the full team that I've served with over the last 10, 12 years, but for those that are here right now, I just want you to know how much I appreciate all that you do to make us all look good and celebrate who we are in this city. Um, our key has been trying to acknowledge folks before they have passed on to glory. We want to give you your honors when you are here to accept them. And we want our young people to learn and see that it's possible. Anything is possible. And public service is a grand way to enjoy the benefits of life, but also give back to your community. So be, uh, bear with me for a moment. One of our newest team members, Tatiana McKnight. Could you come forward, please? <laughs> Tatiana uh, began as an intern, I believe. She was in the mayor's office of communications, uh, and now she is in safety, and she has been an asset coming up with ideas. So Tatiana, thank you. Our resident playwright and um, my dear friend, and I don't know how else I want to describe Cornell, but Cornell Calhoun has written a number of uh, productions during Black History Month and beyond. He also does them for Women's History Month. He is a creative genius. He is a gem to be around, and he gives me a hard time just like anyone's older brother would. So Cornell, please come forward so I can present you with your plaque. Another one of our newer members, but she has been a gem, especially with uh, doing the research for this year's um, event. And I thank you, Tony, for all of your work and for keeping track of the finances. So come forward. So Cal is like a big brother, but then there is the big brother. 
Um, I would like to bring forth at this time my brother Michael. And Michael, I want to thank you for your commitment to this committee, particularly as it relates to the services and to uh, the Tuskegee Airmen. Okay, Randy could not be here. Randaline Porch, um, all of the signage that you see around, she created this. Um, she has done a fantastic job for us over the years, but she's busy down at the print shop and could not come down. But I do want to acknowledge all of the hard work that she puts in for us. And then there is Miss Isha Hand. Isha makes sure that all of our venues are taken care of. She came in today, made sure that this place looked as great as it does. Um, she has just been, she is like uh, the newest, I think, member of the committee, possibly maybe, but she has brought um, a light to the committee and she is very um, competent and creative when it comes to making sure that we have our venues, that we have uh, everything that we need, and I appreciate all the work that you do, Isha. And finally, we would not have been able to do all the work that we've done without our fearless leader. Um, he gets on our nerves oftentimes. <laughs> we love him, but uh, he can be a problem. But he has really uh, been the backbone behind all of this. And because of that, I wanted to thank you personally, Director Grady L. Stevenson, for all of the work that you have done. So that concludes our program, but I want to thank all of you for coming out today and spending some time with us. I hope that you take some time to look at some of the photos that we have around, because we have gone back into the 1800s to recognize and to show that African Americans, blacks in this city have been making a way, uh, we have been a part of just everything about this city. So take a few seconds and look them over and thank you again for coming out. I, I, I would be remiss if I let her move right. without acknowledging her. Shelly has for the last, Blaine said 10 years, but I'm sure we've closer to 15 that we've been working on this committee and doing this work. And after I lost what I thought was my right hand, Shelly stepped in and, and uh, did a fantastic job so, Shelly, I want to acknowledge you in front of this good group of people and tell you thank you and I appreciate everything that you've ever done for all of us here in the city of Cleveland. Shelly puts in a lot of work on these events and so on Black History Month, period. So thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. right here. I didn't need it. Thank you. Randy did that. Um, at this time, I will call up Michael Shockley to uh, finish out with a word from the Lord to bless us. And again, thank you all for coming. Be safe and enjoy. Thank you. Everybody, can we uh, with humble hearts and clear minds say thank you to our Lord. We can never thank him enough for what he has done for us. We couldn't say thank you a million times, but that would be enough. We want to thank you, Lord, for black history, which is uh, world history, because we've always been there. 
Let's not forget that Simon the Cyrene helped lift up Christ's cross. Now as we go to our homes and our jobs, may we lift up our cross and carry them the way we're supposed to. I want to say uh, thank you to the, uh, the food. The food is very, very delicious. And being a servant, to serve the public is like a blessing. Didn't Christ say he want to serve and not be served? Let us serve people the way we're supposed to and thank people for coming to our venues, crossing paths with us. We want to say thank you to all. Thank you to all these uh, guests and their, uh, and their families for allowing them to come here with us. And we say Christ Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. May we have travel of mercy to our homes and to our jobs and to our next venue. We we'll say thank you so very much for this committee of my siblings. I love each and every one of you, and thank you all. May we say amen. Amen. amen.